Mm-hmm. And this is a special Top Shelf Tuesday edition of the Odd Coaches Podcast as we finally kick off the Find the Balance book. It is out. On today's special Top Shelf Tuesday edition of the Odd Coaches Podcast, Dr. Adams and Coach Francis discuss the release of Dr. Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. Welcome to today's show. Dr. Keith Adams is the president of the CKA Save Project, a nonprofit organization designed to assist student athletes and the people who work with them through educational and professional development. He is a career academic and athletic leader with close to 30 years of experience on the high school and college levels. He has won numerous championships and epitomizes professionalism. Coach Mike Franchise Francis is one of the most successful football and basketball coaches in the state of Maryland. He, too, is a career academic and athletic leader with close to 30 years of experience on the high school and college level and is self-admittedly a little rough around the edges. Both men have mentored countless student-athletes, teachers, and coaches using their unique methods and approaches to leadership. Both men also share a unique and special friendship that was cultivated often through their unique perspective of life and leadership. Dr. Adams through his extensive educational background and Coach Francis through his life experiences. Can these two men share a podcast without driving each other crazy? Welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today is my tag team partner. And yes, I am pulling it out, the Scott Hall to my Kevin Nash in The Outsiders, the icon, the showstopper, the main event, and the reason why we are here, Coach Mike Francis and Coach I pulled out the outsiders because that's kind of how I have felt my entire career because I have looked at things a little bit differently because of how I've been brought up. And this is a special Top Shelf Tuesday edition of the Odd Coaches Podcast as we finally kick off the Find the Balance book. It is out. So one, before we even begin, thank you, my friend, for allowing us this opportunity just share the work that has been going on behind the scenes but how are you doing sir i'm doing well sir i'm doing well congratulations on the release of the book someday i hope we do an episode where i too am able to release a book we're gonna make sure that that happens because we've got publishers we got everything and um in the first this this entire show is just literally introducing the, the, the book, Finding the Balance on Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success to, to the audience. And it's just a, a general outline of how the book came together. We'll tell you a little bit about each chapter. Uh, but before we begin, you can order your copy at our website. Everything is directly through us at ckasafeproject.org. From the main page, just simply click CK Safe Project Services, and order the Find the Balance book. Uh, so our book has 21 chapters and covers a number of items. Uh, I am, I'm shocked, um, I'm humbled, because we have over 200 pages of content, and it all started simply um, from a rant from my high school coach, uh, <laughs> talking about Charles Barkley and the I'm Not a Role Model commercial from the early 90s. And I said to him, boss, one day we're going to get a group of us together and we're going to have an organization to help each other. And he gave me the applesauce. And uh, that rant, for whatever reason, kind of stayed with me. Um, so the book opens with forward from Fowler and Campbell. Fowler and played for me in high school, went on to have a tremendous career at George Mason. Um, and using the 40-year recruitment model, <laughs> had you know played in Europe for a dozen years, and now you know he's back working at Mason, and he's got two kids, and his son is the burgeoning high school student athlete, and it, it was just good to uh, you know have <laughs> one of your former players who actually is sharing the knowledge he had with his kid, and as he said, man, it's like. Um, Everybody gets to have you as a coach now, coach. Mm. <laughs> and, and that was very humbling. Uh, uh, that's a great analogy. Yeah. So, uh, again, I'm going to try to stay focused. Uh, luckily, the listeners uh, can't see me well enough, but our visual <laughs> audience may see me a, a couple of times. Chapter one just talks about why finding the balance between academic and athletic motivation is important. 
Uh, chapter two introduces everybody to the CK Save Project. Uh, as you hear in our opening and, and in many of our commercials, we're just a group of people who have lived in both academic and athletic worlds, and we just try to help. And helping is hard because a lot of times the type of help we provide is usually relief pitchers. And what I mean by that is uh, your grades are so bad that you need help. <laughs> and how can you help us? And I'm like, man, I wish you had to let us help early on, but we're still going to, you know, help out as best as we can. And in the book, you can find out about our past events. And uh, towards the end of this episode, we'll talk about what we're doing currently. Chapter three talks about the difficulties of being a student athlete because it is hard. Uh, and, and I think people underestimate how hard it is to do both. That's why we talk about find a balance. And coach, if, if you could impart a little bit of knowledge there, because you're with student athletes every day, you know, can you talk about the difficulties of, of being a student athlete, especially in 21st century with all the things that are going on? 21st century, there's so many distractions and there's so many things going on. The expectations are almost doubled. If you ask me for student athletes are concerned and uh, things that go on on a daily basis for a student athlete on top of just being a regular teenager or being a regular student. Because at the end of the day, you still got to commit three to four hours to your sport. Mm -hmm. which in that three to four hours, some people could be done their studying. Some people could work a job those four hours that, you know, helps them financially. But it is a serious sacrifice that comes with being a student athlete in the 21st century. And there's additional scrutiny. You know, everyone's yeah. looking at you as more than, like, for some reason, I call it the double jeopardy, the double punishment. Student athletes seem the ones to get a lot of blame for things and everyone looks at them and, you know, those band members and the drama club, you know, they don't mind student athletes when they get in their new facilities. They don't know that was built by those football players because they went to a bowl. But if let them not be able to have something their night that they want because something's going on on campus football wise and they can't park, then they're upset, you know, but they're fine with everything that comes with it. So, yeah. And chapter four is on motivation. I spend a lot of time just kind of defining what we look at as motivation. And I will share uh, CK Safe Project defines motivation as a desire to act. What moves someone to action? And that action can be intrinsic, which is internal, extrinsic, which is some, you know, outside reason positive or negative. And a motivation is what I jokingly say the Scooby Doo right on row. I don't know why I did whatever. Uh, chapter five, we spend a lot of time talking about stakeholder relationships. Uh, chapter six, we give an overview of the NCAA. Uh, chapter seven, uh, recent topics in the NCAA. And yes, a lot of the topics that we talk about on the show, we discuss within the book. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be Nostradamus sometimes. <laughs> chapter eight are other college sports opportunities because it's not D1 or bust. We have division one. We have Division Two. We have Division Three. We have Junior College. We have NAIA. We have a lot of different college opportunities, and you can have a tremendous experience doing a lot of different things. Coach, uh, as somebody who's worked in college athletics, can you speak a little bit about some of those other college opportunities that we discuss in the book? The opportunities our st students have, student athletes, it's it's, it's starting to be. <laughs> How can I say? I think with name, image, and likeness and things like that, I think some of the opportunities the kids are getting are, are more friendlier for them than it was before. You know, they're kind of isolated at times. Uh, being a student athlete, sometimes they just put them in the certain dorms and you're only around those kind of people. So now you get to really, I think they get to really enjoy the college atmosphere a little more cause as schools are starting to go away from that kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, chapter nine talks about the transition from high school to college athletics. And we really want uh, middle school students to really look at that chapter because the transition from high school to college athletics is extremely similar to the transition from middle school expectations to high school expectations. So uh, I, I hope people at different levels of readiness uh, get a lot out of that one. And uh, before we go to a quick break, chapter 10 
is actually my personal journey. And um, one of the things that I'm nervous about, um, and my, my partner knows this from our conversations, when you put yourself out there, this is literally uh, a memoir of how I got to do what it is that I do now. And people will hear and see, you know, personal stories and so many people from my life in academics and athletics allow me the opportunity for us to share our story. These private moments are now for public consumption. So it was extremely humbling and it's an honor to, you know, tell my journey along with the people who, who are part of that ride. Um, Coach, before we go to break, uh, you had a chance to uh, get a preview of that. And more importantly, you've lived <laughs> this this mm-hmm. journey with me. Any yeah. quick thoughts on that before we go to break? I think that, you know, the personal journey, a lot of things that like we go back up to chapter four when you talk about motivation. I really could see the motivation you had and, and how your experiences you know, kind of set the set the tone in the way you do it now and the way you deal with your kids. You took a lot of your own personal things and your journey is very specific to you, but it, you allowed other people to now with this book go on that journey with you. And, and I really, really appreciate it because you're telling stories that a lot of people don't know. Some stories we share, the names are different, <laughs> but the experiences, you know, that we share as coaches and, and rarely do you get this side of it. So I applaud you. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back after this short break. Dr. Keith Adams, president of the CKA Save Projects book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success is now available for purchase. The book serves as both a memoir of Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes numerous personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues, including former George Mason standout, Fowler and Campbell. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast, and this is a special edition of our Top Shelf Tuesday uh, show as we kick off the Finding the Balance book. Um, So in segment two, we're going to continue on talking about the different chapters in the book. Uh, Chapter 11. Uh, is kind of the academic piece. We examine the relationship between academic and athletic motivation. Uh, Chapter 12 talks about transferring theory into practice in terms of improving individual motivation. Chapter 13 was extremely fun for me because I talked to a lot of prominent coaches uh, in a variety of sports, and they shared their perspectives on today's student-athletes. And I think coaches are going to uh, enjoy Mm -hmm. hearing what other coaches have to say about today's student-athletes. Coach Francis, I do want to pause with that. Um, As Hmm. you were still in the belly of the beast, as we like to say, that's the rose, baby. Um, what are your thoughts as we get from fall sports to winter sports? Do you think today's student athletes get a bum rap? What do you think? Yes, I think they do. Uh, I think they do get a bum rap. I think there's a lot of things that's being put on them that necessarily they're not responsible for and shouldn't be responsible for. Our student athletes should not be the ones running the building. We can't make our student athletes the example of everything that is good or everything that is bad. I think all students need to share in that. So I think they get a bum rap for it. All right. And again, I I can't wait for folks to actually read what, what coaches have said and The perspectives are all over the place. Uh, Chapter 14, we give specific suggestions for finding the balance. Because, again, as we've said in our advertisement, it is a partial memoir, but it's also an instructional guide. And we want 
people to read the book and actually be able, as soon as they read something, to actually use it in their day-to-day life. Chapter 15, our daily action student a- to increase student-athlete success. Chapter 16, we actually provide student-athletes a recruiting plan. Hey, this is how we believe you should do recruiting for the purposes of not only playing a sport, but actually graduating. We talk a lot about college attendees versus college graduates. Mm. And the, be- the biggest stat in my entire career that I'm most proud of are not the championships I've won, not the players who've gone on to do whatever, but the fact that 90% of the people who have followed this model are college mm. graduates, and many of them have postgraduate success academically. And that's all we want is to put you in a position to be better than we were at the start of your adult life journey. Yes, sir. Um, Chapter 17, we actually do this for college coaches. We give our college coaches recruiting plan. Many college coaches are not educators by trade. They're coaches or they're people who've been involved in, in just athletics, whatever. So this is a plan that we use with a high level of success. So, Uh, I definitely wanted to put that in. Chapter 18, uh, again, thank you to all of those who allowed me to tell their stories. We actually share individual stories um, from individuals about how they use our Find the Balance plan. And you get to hear uh, from from Fowler and Campbell, from George Mason. You get to hear from Brendan Strawn. Brendan Strawn, who currently is the assistant coach at St. Joe's University, played for me at Hood College and went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School. And his story alone is just living proof that if you stay true to who you are, you surround yourselves with positive influences, you can get to the highest of D1 levels from anywhere you want to. And coach, I know you know Brendan and I know you know a lot of Brendans in terms of you know their stories. Um, is, is there any feedback you want to give? Because I know you had a chance to peek at some of the case studies. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know you know actually some of the, the people we actually spoke about. But uh, any thoughts you have uh, on that piece? As you say, we have a lot of Brendans. We all run into some Brendans here and there. But it's great to see that the young man is taking everything and, like, not stop practicing what you gave him. I think that's very important. I think that coaches, we have the chance to make the biggest impact on people that even teachers and parents can't make at times because of the connection with what it is that helps them find a balance. And while we have them and we have them, you know, what you're able to do as a coach, what I'm able to do as a coach, can can really set them up and give them principles to practice no matter what they're doing and they become successful. Like you said, it's not about winning championships. It's about 15, 20 years from now when you get that invite to the wedding or you, you know, the baby <laughs> Chris, you know what I mean? Like it's you know, we don't recruit for four years, we recruit for 40, as you say, you know, you don't pick yeah. a school for that. So and, and, I, and I'm glad you, you you mentioned wedding. Um he, he may be a little embarrassed by this, but he won't be bad at me. Um, our relationship in terms of Fowler and Campbell and I have passed that coach player relationship. And when I got married uh, in 2016, I got married in Myrtle beach and, um, you know, KJ was five or six at the time, whatever it was. And man, it's just going to be hard to get him down there just because of travel. It's July, it's tough. And, uh, Fowler and happened to be home from playing in Europe and I called him and I said, man, this is a weird request, Mm -hmm. but can can you guys come down uh, to the wedding and then take KJ home um, in South Carolina, Myrtle beach from, from Maryland. That's not the easiest drive, man. That's 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 (laughs) that's a money drive right there. That's That's eight, nine hours. Yes, sir. (laughs) And without missing a beat, he said, I got you. He and his wife, Sharita, who is the lovely voice behind the Odd Coaches podcast. He did it because I asked. And those are the kind of things that stay with you, as you said. Mm. Man, we haven't played a game that he was my player since 2004. But (laughs) there's not a moment 
or day or week that we don't go and just reach out to each other. So it's I can't amazing. wait for folks to read about those case studies. Um, chapter 19, Staying Connected. And Connected is an acronym. So I hope you guys take a read uh, to stay connected because it's tips for increasing success in a post-pandemic world. What people have asked me throughout is, how do you get recruited in, in this strange time? How do you stay motivated academically in this strange time? How do we do a lot of this? So being a part of education for so long, being a part of athletics for so long, I've had a chance to talk to really smart people and listening to those really smart people. We came up with the state connected plan and I hope folks uh, get a chance to read it and give us their feedback on that. Uh, chapter 20 is just a peek behind the curtain. There's a lot of phrases and expressions that I use that even some of my friends uh, <laughs> kind of use in their own lexicon. And I just kind of give a little bit behind the scenes of how I've come to, to use those words. As fans hear me say Jiminy Crickets, it's my daily shout out to, to my good friend, the late, great Walter Hardy and greetings and salutations and, and all of that. We talk a little bit about it. Um, at the end of the book is our epilogue, and uh, I get a chance to just share my thoughts on my own high school coach who passed away uh, during the writing of this book, and it was the last project we worked on, and I miss Hank a lot every day, and I don't miss basketball. I just miss calling him on the way home from work and mm. just going off. As That's how the darn show started, just us talking to each other and going off. And the last piece, and... Um, you know, I'm very proud of, of, of her. Uh, Ajua Blankson Wood was my high school basketball manager, and <laughs> she gets the last word. There is no one who knows Coach Adams uh, better than Ajua Blankson Wood because your managers are special. Coach, you know your managers are special. I know my managers are special. And uh, the unique bond and relationship that I had with them, uh, I just had to give Ajua the last word. Um, so as we close this segment, Coach, any other thoughts before we move on to the final segment, sir? No, I agree with you on that. I, I've had managers, like, going way, way back from, like, when I first started as a JV. I was, like, a JV head coach, and I had girls who were my, our managers, and to this day I hear from them. They check, hey, coach, how you doing? Like, it's, it's, it's just something. And, again, they're really involved, and they know. They know everything. And when you find quality people like that and you still have that, you know, that connection, it, it says a lot about your program. Yeah. Hank used to tell us he'll take a good manager over a bad player <laughs> every day of the week mm -hmm. and twice on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back after this short break. Three Crown Naturals, a preferred partner of the CKA Save Project, is having a raffle with 50% of the proceeds supporting the CKA Save Project. The winner of the raffle receives a royal package bundle, a soap sampler, a travel size foot oil and scrub, and a three-day, two-night vacation voucher. To enter, visit www.3crownnaturals.com, spelled using the number three and naturals with an S on the end. Simply click holiday raffle at the top of the page. Hurry and enter. This drawing will take place on December 19, 2021. Welcome back to this special edition of the Odd Coaches Podcast, Top Shelf Tuesday edition, as we kick off the Find the Balance book project. And in this final segment, I just want to share some hopes that I have for the book. This is going to be, for me personally, a two-year project where we're just sharing our thoughts and ideas via the Odd Coaches Podcast, via the show. Uh, I kind of look at it as a job interview formerly work with the CK Safe Project. CK Safe Project is just simply designed to assist student athletes and the people who work with them through educational and professional development. So I'd love for you to read about us and then consider working with us. It's also an opportunity for people to better understand the importance of finding the balance uh, between academic and athletics on a national level. There are so many benefits to finding the balance in terms mm. of your long-term future, future employment opportunities. Uh, organizations want folks with an athletic background because they're team players. They know how to work under deadlines. They know how to work under pressure. There's so many benefits. So I, I do want folks to, to, to read about that. 
it's a chance to tell stories of people, including myself, who've achieved success using our model and give them flowers now. And it's not just about basketball. It's not just about men. Uh, I can't wait for people to read Rachel Lorea and Demoa's story and Dijanae's story. There's so many stories out there and read about Ajua's story. So we've got soccer players. We got track folks. Uh, Dijanae uh, was a three sport division three athlete and an RA. So, you know, hear her story and how she used athletics to put her in a position that she's in now. And it's a chance to give back because this is what was done for me. This is what was done for you, Coach Francis. This yes, book sir. is dedicated to the concept of team because we don't do this by ourselves. This is not an individual accomplishment. This is a accomplishment achieved through combined efforts. So it's my attempt to share how my team has helped me throughout. It's also an opportunity to introduce uh, our, our services. Uh, CKA provides uh, a number of services that we hope people will want to take advantage of, whether it's our academic skill assessment. You have trainers for all types of sports and all, and one of the things the trainers do is actually watch you perform the sport. Mm. Well, we actually put you through academic related tasks. We actually review your time management to better assess you, but there's a cost to that. And we try to make that cost as marginal as possible to, to better, you know, help you, but we also have expenses as well. So we hope, you know, you take advantage of that academic and athletic consulting billion dollar corporations, hire consultants all the time to help them be better companies. We want you to consider hiring us to help you through the college recruitment process, the college application process, and make better decisions. One of the reasons why there's so many people in the transfer portal is because they picked wrong the first time and <laughs> they used flawed methodology, flawed <laughs> ideas, flawed in information, and then they're, they're, they're out of luck. Uh, and I did want to pause and allow you, because Coach, you're still in the belly of the beast again. Yes, Any sir. thoughts you have about, you know, transfer portal and kids transferring and just using academic and athletic consultants to just try to help you with the process? And again, the word is help. Yeah, and I think it, it starts, like you said, like uh, most kids transfer because what's going on is they pick the wrong place. You know, sometimes you can't worry about how big a school is. You got to worry about what the fit is for you. Like, do, first of all, the first thing I always ask my kids is, do they have your major? Which some student athletes don't even know what they want to major. In, and that's fine because a lot of kids don't. But you got to think about that. Like, you, you, you have to make that important, number one. And number two, my biggest thing, my contribution to them, I don't tell them where to go, but I'll ask them this. If you weren't playing sports, could you see yourself on this campus? Could you see yourself enjoying a college life? Because sports are only going to be three, four hours of your day, you know, out of season. In season, it might be a little more because you got your study hall, video, weight room, like it's a little more time with practice. <clears throat> so, but the rest of the day, can you be happy on this campus? Can you be happy with the people you're around, with the coaches, your teammates? Like, without playing the sport, how do you see yourself? And that's where I, I tell them to look at it. And I'm glad you mentioned that because one of my players, uh, James Andrew Smat, who played for me as a high school player, had that same situation. He went to a school. They had a coaching change his first year. So the people who brought him in, weren't there. And he actually stopped playing basketball, graduated in four years. Drew will always say, coach, I graduated in four. I had a wonderful experience because I did take your advice. I went to a place that even if I wasn't playing, I would be okay with. So I, I can't wait for folks to read that story. Uh, and then we also offer academic monitoring, whether it's for a marking period, a semester, or a full year. Uh, every three to four weeks, we actually monitor your grades, and we have conversations about the why behind the what and what skills are needed. We have learning specialists on staff that aren't tutors. They're learning specialists. So let's have a conversation about what you're struggling with and how we can best assist you yeah. and how you as a student can access the levels of help that you need. And finally, we offer workshops. Um, we want folks to take a look at the book 
and then see what assistance they need, whether it's a time management workshop, whether it's an organizational workshop, whether it's a get to know your personnel better workshop, we're happy to provide that assistance. Um, and again, for more information or to work with us, please visit our website at www.ckasafeproject.org. Click the contact tab and we can you know, begin that process. I do wanna say, there is no right way or wrong way with us. It is a preferred way. And that's why I say my personal journey. Um, not everybody liked playing for Coach Adams. Not everybody liked playing for Coach Francis. And as Coach Francis said, that's okay. We just try to do the best we can. Uh, so, again, you can order your copy of the book at www.cksafeproject.org. Again, from the main page, simply click CK Save Project Services in order to find the balanced book. As we close uh, this special episode, again, I want to thank my, my partner for this. The OCP has a, a very big announcement. Um, beginning in January of 2022, the OCP is adding a fourth episode weekly, and it's going to be called the Find the Balance Friday, where we have the opportunity to talk to people about the issues related to finding a balance between academic and athletic success. There's so much going on in high school athletics, so much going on in college athletics. We actually will have the platform for Coach Francis and I to talk about these issues and also to bring on guests, academic guests, coaches, players, what have you. Um, so we're very excited about this, but this is when we ask for your help please consider donating to the CK Safe Project. We are a nonprofit organization. Uh, so a lot of this is just funded by love and, and people who support us. So if, if you're interested in helping us, again, please go to the website, please contact us. We're also on Venmo and Cash App at CK Safe Project. Um, but again, Coach, as we close, anything you want to mention about this exciting announcement? We're very jacked about it. And uh, I do want to definitely give you a chance to you know, acknowledge this work and, and thank you for your help. I think it's the greatest, I think it's a great thing that it's, it's, it's being approached. I don't think, I think a lot of people take for granted uh, the situation and, and they look at student athletes and seem to believe they always have it together and that everyone involved around them is, is doing it for the right reasons is that's not the case. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on that kids do need support with and how do they get it? Because as coaches, there's only certain things they can do at the university level, even at the high school level, we can't go home with them, but someone has to be there and, and be able to help them as they make it. Getting into college is one thing. Staying there is the most important. So I think this allows kids to stay there. And then when you look at the high school room, I think you can release some stress. If they're making that transition from middle school to high school, you can help them relieve some stress by implementing some of these things, time management skills, study skills, things like that, that they can take bits and pieces of and make them better students and make it their transition smoother. Yeah, and that decrease in the stress thing goes back to the socio-emotional support mm -hmm. that we both don't think is paid enough attention to. You tried um, to throw Scotty Pippen in there, so we'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So with that, <laughs> On behalf of my tag team partner, Coach Mike Francis, I am Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening or watching the Odd Coaches podcast. Thank you for support of this incredible project that so many people helped me with. And we will see you on the sidelines. Take care. Till next time. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches podcast on Spotify, Podbean, and YouTube so you don't miss an episode. Follow the Odd Coaches podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Coaches Odd. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F-R-A-N-C-H-I-Z-E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.